everybody. This is a flat cap cafe racer. I got Mr. Bill behind me doing a little filming. Let's say hello, Mr. Bill. Hey, everybody. It's a beautiful day in Idaho. Mr. Bill's on his tiger. And today I'm reviewing a 2022 Triumph Tiger Sport 660. And hopefully you'll join us with this one. It's going to be good. Some of you may remember about nine months ago I was looking to replace a couple of bikes that were stolen in August. One of the bikes I looked at was this Tiger uh, Sport 660. I really liked it. I didn't get it because I, I got the Tiger 900 or another Tiger 900 because I thought it was a little bit better touring bike, especially two up. But today I'm going to get a little bit better ride on this one and we'll show you some there isn't any differences in spec between the 2022 and the 2023 however there's a few differences on this particular bike this particular bike has a puke windscreen which is uh, 110 millimeters higher or an old money I think it's 4.3 inches it also has a little bit shorter it's got the low seat um, on it so the standard stock seat is 32.87 inches which is exactly the same as a tiger gt pro on the low setting so i'm going to show you a couple pictures in here showing you the the even though with this low seat that you still have a long way from the seat to the foot peg so it's very good ergonomically for the people that have problems with their knees it has a lot of still has a lot of ground ground clearance on it um, I'll show you a picture of that in here so that's pretty good and I'm going to show you a picture between me sitting on a stock tiger a stock tiger with stock bars and everything and what I look like sitting on this bike and not surprisingly that the bars are a little bit closer to me my hands are a little bit higher uh, my knees are up just a little bit but very very similar in, in uh, riding ergonomics and the riding triangle this bike has on it it's it's sprung what I'd say pretty softly it has a good amount of travel on the front it has a show of 41 millimeter cartridge fork on the front with 150 millimeter travel or 5.9 inches and it has a, a showy uh, show up a, a adjustable rear shock for preload only it's got a remote adjuster and as with all the bikes like this when I take them out I set it in the middle setting so I've got to preload in the middle setting I think it goes like 31 30 clicks I'm at 15 so it's sprung pretty softly it feels good on the so far on the road I think that I'm gonna give it a little test on the front brake bill so so it does have a lot of dive you can see the dive on it so with this cartridge fork if you want to stiffen it up you're probably going to have to change the fork oil in it to stiffen it up if if you're interested in the in that hard dive keeping that dive from going down real fast There's, there's no adjustments on the front forks at all um, now the speaking of brakes it's running a Nissan, Nissan uh, 310 millimeter uh, dual uh, two-piston 
front brakes and they have a good feel to have a real good feel to them the front brake love lever is adjustable uh, on the back you have a single Nissan 255 millimeter rear brake and it feel, has a good has a good feel to it and Triumph really did a good job of putting um, great great tires on this it's running Michelin Road fives on here now this is a used bike it has uh, about 1100 miles on it so it's just it's just now broken and if you can see the I really like the uh, TFT on it it's to me I like it a little bit better than the um, even my Triumph Tiger TFT although it's smaller and it's not as fancy it's uh, really basic but it's really clear like I said it has a few uh, air uh, windscreen on it which is still adjustable you can still pull it up and down I have it in the lowest setting right now you may hear the difference on this bike it's got a Leo Vinci uh, slip on on it and it sounds really good I think um, it's to me it's just the old-school uh, three-cylinder engine which means it's a little bit smoother than maybe the Tiger 900 it doesn't have as much low-end grunt this bike uh, is geared really uh, low it's got a 16 tooth front and 51 tooth back so it's gearing is a little bit even lower than a stock Tiger 900 traffic on today it's uh, on the highway today but now the seat because it's a low seat doesn't have as much padding in it so uh, it's must have been a, a shorter rider and the, although the seat feels really hard right now to me I don't know if it would be hard on the we'll have to wait to the end of the ride and see I did notice a little bit of vibrations coming into the bars a little buzzy around 5500 rpm which is about 70 miles an hour with the bike where it's currently geared the good thing about this bike is you can get you can change front and rear sprockets that have a lot of changes that you can get either higher or lower on the gearing so I really like that so you could kind of change this to however you wanted it to, to move that RPM around just a little bit the gas tank on this is 4.5 gallons uh, US gallons and uh, that's a pretty good size gas tank I'm sure it's going to get at least mid 40s to 50 miles to a gallon so it gets going to get you some good range I'll put up the, the liters on it. I think it's about 17.2 liters for the new money people. It's got hand guards on it, which I do like. I think if this is my bike, I would probably put heated hand grips on it. And uh, I'll talk about the pricing and some of that stuff. It does it it does not come with a center stand so but you can put the little bobbins on the on the back that has a place for the bobbins to screw into so that's not a problem so you can lift the front uh, rear tire off of the ground if you want to you know 
do the chain or you want to take the tire off or something like that but the, the oil filter on this bike is really easy to get to it's right up front the uh, coolant set reservoir is right on the left hand side and uh, it's really easy to get to all of them should be that easy to get to and check on the right hand side you have a you have a uh, on the engine you have the where you put your oil in then there's a lot right below that there's a little dipstick that you to check the oil in no sight window just the dipstick I do like the way this exhaust sounds I have to admit that <laughs> I, the, the, these, uh, I, I just think the, the old school three cylinders have a little bit better intake sound and exhaust sound coming out of them just a little bit although I do like the, the Tiger uh, 270 you know better because it's got a lot more torque down low But this bike, if you want to make it to a touring bike, I think it would be a. Uh, I would get the. I would get the. Uh, I would get a comfort seat on it, or I would get a. Uh, Corbin makes a nice seat for this bike. It's about uh, four hundred dollars for it, and uh, that would make it a lot more comfortable. You can also get the. Turn around. You can get the uh, the panniers for this bike, color match panniers. And they look really nice with it. Right now, Triumphs has got a special on the, uh, as long as it lasts, for the 2022s, that you can get free panniers for this bike. So that's, that's a pretty good deal. So I would get panniers, I would get the panniers for this bike. I would probably get the shift assist because this bike just kind of now goes for it. I get the heated hand grips on this bike. Unfortunately, it does not come with cruise control. That's I just wish it did because it make it a lot easier. I think on a on a curvy road, this could keep up with most most bikes around it's got uh, 81 horsepower and about 47 foot pounds of torque I highly stress it all because you know the new, new 765s they're you know they're 130 horsepower and I'll admit that the 765 is a little bit more flash you know it's a little bit more flash bike than this is but I think Believe it or not, I, I think I'd rather have this bike. I do like the 765, but and I like the especially that one in the yellow. It's just beautiful. But it has a lot of things on it that I, that I probably won't use. I, I probably wouldn't use 130 horsepower, and I don't really need the the Olin suspension on it. And the comfort on this bike, the ergonomics on the triangle is so much better than the 765 I mean you, you can you can you can do anything you want to with this bike you can tour on it you know you can do stuff like we're doing day rides on it like we're doing today so I I don't know mr. Bill I think one of these may end up in my garage sometime I think this particular bike sells for if you're going to the triumph shop there in Boise I think it sells for 80 about $8,600 now that didn't include it it never includes the tax or whatever you know it doesn't include that but the, the good thing about that $8,600 it includes that $1,000 slip on exhaust that you got includes this little cut down seat if that's what you like and it includes a few um, windscreen so you're getting another you're getting another eleven, twelve hundred dollars on the accessories, and uh, 
for 1100 or more dollars cheaper than the, a, a, a new 2023 660. So that's a pretty good deal, I think. This bike only has 1,100 miles on it, so. There you go. Okay, folks, we've talked about a lot of the stuff here on the bike. It, how, how it feels is, it feels like, like a good bike to me. I mean, it's, it's one of these bikes that I can see why I had it in my short list. And you know what? I still have it in my short list. I, it may, one of these may find this way in my garage here one of these days. I think this is a very, very underrated bike. Um, it's probably, like I said, it's probably not the flashiest bike around, but it's, I think it's, I think it's a good looking bike. I really want to thank the, the folks at uh, Triumph Shop for letting me take this bike out uh, and do a 100 mile plus ride on it, I guess, and take it out for a couple hours. Because you can tell a little bit more about it and you can, you know, two or three miles or around the block, get a little better feel for it. Been real generous with letting me take the bikes out. I've taken uh, three Triumphs and one Indian out. I was set to take out a uh, XC 1200 Scrambler the other day, and about two hours before I was supposed to pick it up, they sold it. So there, you couldn't take that one out. I was going to ride that one. So one of the subscribers asked to do that. Sorry, I couldn't do that and make that happen. Take out a T120 one of these days. Not real sure. I'm getting pretty close to my end days of my video. So we'll probably do the Roy's RD350. And uh, we'll do the Bonneville. And uh, maybe do a drag race video. I don't know. A little over four weeks to going to the Bonneville Salt Flats. Uh, there's a new subscribers or viewers. There's a video on uh, the bike I'm taking out there. It'll be a Rocket 3 belonging to Rob Smith. I'll be riding that bike for him. We'll be out there uh, around the 5th through the 8th, I think, 9th of August, somewhere around there. So if you happen to be in a Bonneville area, you'll have to come over and, and join us. We'll be running bike number 1006. 1006, 1006. And be toting the, toting the bike around in the big red Ford van. You gonna say goodbye, Mr. Bill? Goodbye, everybody. He said goodbye. So I'm gonna say goodbye also. Bye. Join me and my friends at Flat Cap Cafe Racer for riding and racing. Please subscribe.